Oh, I have to tell you, George, I am pretty excited. I've never been to a clown school before. Oh, just think. We get to see Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown performer. Okay, here we are. Just have to find a parking space. Oh, look, there's one right in front. Ah, it's okay. There's still room for us. Wow, Pepe El Loco is popular. Why don't you go in and save some seats for us while I park the car? The show is on the ninth floor. <laughs> this was the best school ever. And that was the funniest messenger ever. The elevator left without him. George decided he should take the stairs. The messenger clown dropped his bag and his hat and nose. Maybe the messenger clown was going to Pepe El Loco's show too. George could give them back to him. Yes! Sorry. The stairwell doors didn't have numbers, but George could still find the ninth floor because George could count. One. Two. Three. George had forgotten what number he was on. Maybe someone inside could help. <gasps> A messenger! Thank goodness you're here! Why aren't you in uniform? <laughs> Company rules! All clown school employees must be in clown uniform at all times! Now, Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown, will be here in 15 minutes to perform his amazing show. But he'll need this. Ooh. It's part of the greatest clown gadget ever. But it's top secret. Pepe mailed all the parts to different offices so no one would know what it was. <laughs> I need you to pick them up and deliver them to Pepe. <laughs> George was excited to help Pepe. If he moved fast, he could pick up all the parts and still make the show. The next gadget part you need to pick up is on the fifth floor. This will help you remember. Hurry! Pepe Aloco will be here in 14 and a half minutes! Are tricky. Take the stairs to five. You're on the third floor now. <laughs> but how do you get from three to five? George was super good at counting from one to ten, but counting from the middle was hard. <laughs> and then George realized he could go down to the first floor, then count his way back up to five. <laughs> Uh-huh. 
Okay, this was one. <laughs> A hero alone. Mission, find the one and restore it to its rightful place. Mere guards can't stop fearless George. <laughs> He's tracked the one of ones to here, the lair of the dark Betsy. Buford Fromage, famous for smartness. Yay! Ooh, help! Ah! I am free! <laughs> and sore. <laughs> Even though Fromage is free, you will never get the one of ones back. <laughs> She's right. You'll never find it because you'll never get past my big brass bubbly butt! Time out! Time out, Steve! Whoosh, clank! You mean Professor Fromage! No, I mean Steve. Time out. Why are you sticking a robot on us? I'm supposed to be the bad guy this time. Yeah, you're bad, but I'm secretly worse. It's a twist. Exciting. Unexpected. Adventures are supposed to be full of surprises. Whoosh, clank, clank, ha. Betsy, Steve, time to go. Ah. You want us to stop playing right at the exciting part? Well, that means tomorrow you'll start playing right at the exciting part. Hey, that's right! George didn't want to mess everything up by cleaning, but he knew that you couldn't leave toys on the floor. Someone could get hurt. Before we go, help George clean up. It took so long to set all this up, we never got to find out how our high-stakes adventure ended. George thought all night about how he could keep his toys set up. The next day, Betsy and Steve rushed over to play. Ah! Let's set up as fast as we can. No time to waste. Mm. <laughs> he already did it! It's not as big, but it's also not on the floor. Does that mean we don't have to spend time putting it all away? <laughs> You're so smart. Why couldn't I have had a monkey instead of a brother? You guys will never escape! Clank! Clank! There's no escape! But George had an idea. Fearless George had to think fast. Okay, now we're tied to the robot. Huh. You'll never get the one! <gasps> I'm sorry. Huh? I thought it would be okay to set up out here, but it turns out Aunt Augusta's coming over for tea, so I'll need to use the table. That was too bad. Where else could George set up the toys? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Balcony. Great idea. I'll help you set it up out there. You can leave it as long as you want. <laughs> this is great, George. We don't have to waste a lot of time building it and then putting it away. <laughs> Ah! 
when farmers like Mr. Rankins were preparing for the livestock competition at the state fair. And George was helping. I have high hopes for you, Ulysses. I think you're going to win a blue ribbon this year. But, Grandpa, your animals always win blue ribbons. Yeah! Allie was right. Every animal did have a blue ribbon. Every animal, except Howie the hog. Hey, ha, ha. Yeah, where's Howie's blue ribbon? <laughs> Howie wanted a ribbon more than anything, but somehow it never happened. Uh, I've entered Howie a couple of times. He always starts out eager, don't you? <laughs> But I guess he doesn't want the ribbon bad enough to train for it, do you, Howie? <laughs> <sighs> He's so disappointed when he loses. I don't have the heart to train him again. Uh. <laughs> You're right, George. Maybe we could train Howie. Here's the rule book. Good luck. Washing a pig was easy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Howie likes mud. Once they got the kinks worked out. And the second step was a breeze. Almost. <sighs> well, how's it going? <laughs> Look, Grandpa, we got Howie washed and brushed. Oh, that's the easy part. Well, good luck with the third step. Mm. Looks like we walk Howie for 30 minutes and poke him with a stick. <gasps> poke him with a stick? <laughs> oh. No wonder Howie didn't like training. But, Grandpa, why do we have to poke Howie? Well, if there's another way to get a hog to exercise for half an hour, I'm all ears. Hmm. There had to be another way. <laughs> it's hard to think when there's a pig snout tickling your ear. There's a way to get a hog to move without a stick. It was called an apple. <laughs> Coming! <laughs> <laughs> Training hogs with treats was easy. <laughs> Unless your hog was higher than your treat. George knew how to get the treat taller. Hey, hey! It's working! Howie's exercising! Go, Howie, go! <sighs> Woo Howie's gonna win that blue ribbon for sure, huh? to win that blue ribbon all right, but exercising made him really hot. <laughs> and the mud was so cool. Oh, Howie stopped exercising again. Maybe he gets too hot. And he needs another bath. <laughs> for Howie to exercise. <laughs> oh, I know. Grandma's living room is nice and cool. Howie can exercise there. 
It was Marco's grandmother's birthday, and Marco was planning a big surprise dinner. He had an assistant to help out. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, his assistant was a monkey. <laughs> Don't worry, George. It's just a masa. We have more. <laughs> See, masa. You know, cornmeal. That's what I used to make Marco's famous tortillas. See, there's lots of... Uh, uh-oh. I thought we had more. <laughs> if there was one thing George knew how to do, it was to fix things. <laughs> this was the first time he'd broken food, but he knew where food came from. The store. Masa? Oh, I am so sorry. I just sold my last bag. Ow! Oh, but I promised my grandmother I'd make tortillas for her birthday. She was so excited. Plus, it's the only thing I know how to make. Hang on. I think you're in luck. The delivery man is here. Hey, it's Uncle Enrique. Uncle Enrique, it's Grandma's birthday. Your abuela's birthday? Muy fantástico. You're going to make your famous tortillas, of course. Of course. Ah. Only... Huh? Only? We're out of masa. Oh, no. No masa, no tortillas. But it turns out you're in luck. You have masa on your truck? Do I have masa? Come on, do I have masa? Uh, no, actually I don't. But I know where you get some. Yay! We'll have your masa in un momento. You're not going to believe this warehouse. Si, si. That's where packaged food in the store comes from. Trucks like mine get food from warehouses like this and deliver it to grocery stores all over the city. Boys, prepare to be amazed. It's one of the biggest warehouses in the city. It has everything. If they don't have masa, nobody does. Don't got it. What? Sorry. You're telling me that in this whole entire warehouse there isn't one bag of masa? Not one? I've had calls all week, still waiting on a shipment. Unless... Mm -hmm. We had a pallet that came down one bag short last week. I think maybe it fell off up there. All the way up there? <laughs> if anyone was an expert on up there, it was George. Hey, lucky one of us is a monkey. <laughs> the warehouse manager was right. There was one bag of masa left. Marco's birthday surprise was saved. George, you did it! Wait, George, don't try to climb down with the bag in your hands. Just toss it. Toss it to me. Just toss it down. I'll catch it. Just toss it. I'm ready. Let her rip. Watch out! What? <gasps> oh, so sorry. I was talking to. Uh, can't see. On the first day of summer, George and Bill always played a game of monkey rules baseball. Ooh. Okay, three balls and two strikes. So here it is, the pitch that will decide the entire game. Ready? Got it, got it, got it! <laughs> Don't got it! Monkey 
Milwaukee Rules baseball is pretty much the same as regular baseball. You run around the bases, but then it gets complicated. You have to touch a fence. Something blue. A cow. And the man with the yellow hat. Safe. I assumed you touched a cow. <laughs> that makes it a tied score. I guess you'll have to play one more game to decide the title. <laughs> Sorry, no can do. As a newspaper delivery specialist, I know from sad experience the dangers of getting overheated. We need to cool off. We should take an inaugural dip in my pool. We'll cool right down once we get into that uh, tank of green stuff. Huh? Algae. A city kid like you probably doesn't know this. Yeah. But even though algae looks like grass, it's actually a lot of tiny organisms that grow in the water. Ah. Guess I should have covered the pool last fall. <laughs> ah. The proper way to handle a situation like this is to dump it out and fill it with clean water. Ah. Ready, one, two, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> you lift the bottom, and I'll pull the top to flip it over. <laughs> well, this isn't going to work. <sighs> we need a bulldozer to turn this over. <laughs> A shovel? <laughs> Not exactly the bulldozer I had in mind. Good idea, but it's going to take forever. Hang on, I know. Perfect. Here. Only empty that much? Ugh, these sure aren't moving enough water. I need a break. So hot. Good idea. The shade is a lot cooler. I'll pour some lemonade. Given up. <gasps> I know. <sighs> I'm a genius. Don't move, George. I'll make you a really long one. <laughs> I'll just stick a bunch of straws together. Okay. That should be long enough. Sucking lemonade through that long straw turned out to be hard work. But eventually, it came. And kept coming. The straw wanted to keep going. How did the lemonade come out of the straw by itself? Oh, okay, let's go empty that pool. Then we can really cool off. <laughs> It was a little cold to be doing this, and it was too big a job. Huh? <laughs> George had really wanted to spend the night in an igloo. <sighs> and maybe he still could. 
he could build his igloo right inside the house. A smaller igloo. It was nice and warm. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. <laughs> oh, it's freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. is off. No wonder it's so cold. Probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! Uh, George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? Uh-huh. You were cold outside, so you thought you'd build an igloo inside. Uh -huh. uh, makes sense. For a city kid. <laughs> As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. <laughs> wow! There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> wow, thanks. That was the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. <laughs> Open every weekend until it melted in the spring. <laughs> hey, just in time. Uh, could you grate the carrots into the batter and put it in the oven while I change my shirt? <laughs> I guess they should make aprons that cover your arms. <laughs> That's great. Uh, then would you slice the cucumbers into the soup and put the apples in the fruit bowl? Thanks, George. <laughs> okay, I think we finally have things under control. <laughs> what is that awful smell? George, uh, thanks for finishing the soup. It smells strange. Is this a cucumber? Mm. It tastes like eggplant. It is eggplant. So what did you put in the carrot cake? Is, it, is this some kind of radish? <laughs> radish cake and eggplant soup and a smelly fruit bowl. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> George couldn't understand it. How could something that tasted so good in the store taste so bad in the soup? I'm sure you could make a good soup with eggplant, but this was a recipe for cucumber soup. <laughs> 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 
Well, we still have, oh, ten minutes. Oh, well, I guess we should just order takeout. Huh? Ooh, yeah! <laughs> uh, but, uh, where are you going? George? <sighs> Customer number one, you are back. And I think I know why. You dropped this on your last visit. Oh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these pictures of carrots, cucumbers, and apples? <laughs> yeah, I see it now. Way to go, Dad. Tell me, my friend, are those the vegetables you have been looking for on your visits? <laughs> Let me get them for you. <laughs> you don't want them? <laughs> Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, nothing like a hard day of analyzing carbon isotope ratios to give a girl an appetite. Hmm. Something smells weird. Oh, that's my uh, radish cake. Really? Yum. George! <laughs> Perfect uh -huh. timing! George? Is that your name? Uh-huh. Hello. I am Win Kuang An, owner of the Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. This is my wife, Hua, and daughter, Mai. Oh, well, hello. Hi. He named the store after us. It means peach blossom. Is that the new Vietnamese grocery on Inn Avenue? I've been looking forward to your opening. Oh, me too. Is all this from your store? It is. We thought we should help George carry in his order. We've brought you eggplant curry, bun tit nung with nuk kiam, a fish sauce with daikon radish. Ooh, I love that sauce. Bitter melon soup, sa hat lu, which is pomegranate seeds in coconut cream and durian shakes. Mmm, it all looks great. And there's so much. Uh, would you join us? Huh? We would be honored. <laughs> A few days later, George headed back to Hua Mai. Someone's been talking. Me! I told everyone I know about how great the food is, and I know a lot of people. But don't worry, George. You'll always be customer number one. <laughs> he was going to need a bigger windmill. Luckily, George knew a perfect place for finding things. The recycling room. <laughs> now, what did Mr. Coyote say? If you're building a windmill, you need sails. A sturdy base. Something for the sails to spin around, and something to make the scarecrow move. <laughs> now that he had the windmill parts, he just had to put them together. Time to take those sails for a spin. But his windmill stopped short. So George gave his windmill a leg up. Four of them. When you're making a windmill, it's easy to get wrapped up in your work. 
gave his sails a trim. His sails moved, but his windmill didn't. What was he missing? When the wind blows, it pushes the sails. And then George realized these were too loose. So he got more sticks and attached the sails with tape. George could push his sails, but the wind couldn't. Mr. Coyote's sails were stiff. Maybe that gave the wind more to push against. So George made his sails stiff. his windmill needed now was a scarecrow mover. <laughs> At last, his windmill was finished. And it was a good thing, too. Huh? Because he was out of tape. Now he just had to wait for the wind. <laughs> and get a wait for his windmill. Scarecrow move. But he did feel bad for Compass and his friends. <laughs> now the pigeons could eat their food while George grew his. If one sleeping bag was good, two were even better. Because when you're somersaulting, you need a soft spot to land. Okay, we've got our mat. What do we make next? <gasps> I know! Hey, Leslie, can we borrow some of your fence for our balance beam? Oh, don't worry. We're gonna put it on the ground. That way you can do gymnastics, too. <laughs> A balance beam shouldn't tip. When George learned to ride a bike and it tipped over, the man put on training wheels. <laughs> Maybe his beam needed training wheels, too. <coughs> Only without the wheels. <laughs> now, if only we had some rings. Some rings were too small, and some were too big. But some rings were just right. Huh. Where did the towels go? 
Maybe you should do abominable exercises. They make your muscles stronger. Yeah. Ugh. going to be a tough one. Aww. It'd have to be the right height. <laughs> Too short. Too tall. <laughs> and it shouldn't tilt. Once George had a handle on things, he added padding, because safety is one of the three S's. Yes! Way to go, George! Ah, ah. Wow, you guys built this yourselves? Well, it was George's idea. He's pretty smart for a city kid. Yeah, and wait till Mrs. Somersault sees us next week. We're gonna be so jam-tastic! At the next class, George couldn't wait to show the teacher what they had learned. You guys are amazing! Are we gymtastic? You certainly are, but how? <laughs> we found another gym. Yeah, and it's open every day. <gasps> every day? Do you think maybe we could have classes there? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We know the owner. And he's a natural at gymnastics. <laughs> Don't worry, George. Your duckling will adapt. This is Bill, signing off until tomorrow. The next morning, George was eager to see how his duckling was doing with his new duck family. Here we are, on day two of the Duckling Chronicles. Look at that! The fourth duckling is with it. Oops, spoke too soon. <laughs> Duckling still thinks George is its mother. George had to show the duckling that monkeys are one thing and ducks are another. <laughs> you make an excellent duckling, George. This was getting nowhere. George decided to try another approach. Farmer Life Magazine? How is that going to help? George wanted to show the duckling that in a typical duck family, there aren't any monkeys. <laughs> That wasn't working either. Maybe if George showed him how to act, the duckling would get the idea. It looks like George is trying the make like a duck maneuver. <laughs> Help! Ah! 
should get this on tape. You're watching Dumpling Duck saving her baby like only a mother duck can. And so, the ducklings were brought together by this daring rescue and by the kid from the city who helped to hatch them. Fantastic! Ending.